Get your mid-year freakout videos ready to go because it is June. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to a fictional escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is the June at a glance slash TBR video. I am going to have to mush them together once again to make some room for more videos on the channel here. We've got so many reviews to get out over the next couple of months. Before we jump into both of those things, make sure you check in the description box down below for links to my social media and Discord should you want to come along for the ride. Now, I do know people are more interested in the TBR than the at a glance stuff, so I will be doing the TBR first and I'll have timestamps down below if you do want to go ahead and watch the at a glance or you just want to be surprised whenever they pop up in the feed. I will say that May was an awesome reading month for me. It is still currently May. It's the 29th at the time that you're seeing this video. I don't know whether that's because I have not been living with my parents for the last sort of three to four weeks or the books have been slightly shorter. They haven't been super chunky, sort of around that 500 page mark. I also had three YA books that read quite quickly in the month of May, so that all sort of contributed to having quite a good reading month. On the June TBR, I honestly don't have too many books, and the reason being is one of those is a chunker, which I expect is going to take me around two weeks to read, and then hopefully have some audio in there as well to keep other things chugging along. So let's jump into the audio first, followed by the physical books I'll be reading, and I do have some wild cards that I might slot in just in case I do have some extra time. So for audio, the first thing I'll be listening to is Blood of Assassins by RJ Barker. This is the Wounded Kingdom book number two, and I'm doing a buddy read with Esme. So Esme and I really enjoyed the first book, which is The Age of Assassins. It was kind of cool because Esme had read the first one before, so she was remembering certain things and actually liked it more on the second time around. I had quite a good time following Gurdon as he was trying to uncover an assassin at a castle situation and following along with the sort of assassiny plotline and political intrigue of a fairly tropey book within book one but the amount of twists and turns that happened in the last sort of I would say two to three hours of the audiobook was insane and it just solidifies for me that RJ Barker can definitely write an ending that keeps you on the edge of your seat and has such an ability with an epilogue to make me want to jump into the next book straight away. So we'll be kicking off June with The Blood of Assassins and continuing on with that series. The next one I'm going to read and to try and start finishing off some series that I've got going on at the moment because I just looked at how many series I'm in the middle of that I actively want to finish and it was quite alarming. So the next book I'm gonna put on here for audio is A Threshold of the Universe by T.A. Bruno. This is the third and final installment of A Song of Camaria. Now, I did like On the Winds of Quesars, but I felt like a lot, about 60% to 70% of that book was quite slow and not a lot happened, not a lot sort of came in to advance the plot. And then the last 30% was edge of your seat, action packed, all the foreshadowing came into place and it was a really awesome end of the book. So T.A. Bruno has said that the uh, third book has a lot more going on in it, so I can't wait to finish off this series and close out A Song of Kamaria. If I do have more time on the audio front, I am looking to start uh, Phantom and Rook. This is by Noah Hawthorne, who is going under the pen name Alina Isaacs. Now this is a cozy, fantasy with a male-male romance and I've heard that it's really wholesome and lovely but also traumatic and I don't know I kind of like when those two things are together so we'll see I'm looking to sort of branch out and read some more queer inclusive stuff here on the channel because I'm part of a couple of those communities I am part of the LGBTQIA plus community and this book has been capturing my attention with the cover and the synopsis on Instagram for such a long time over on Noah's page. I know relatively little about what this book is actually about except I am actively going into a cozy fantasy romance with a queer twist so hopefully I will enjoy it it's got such a lovely cover I have really enjoyed following Noah's journey so I'm looking to give this one a go which brings us to the physical books I've got five books that are definitely happening and then four maybes depending on timing the first one off the bat I'm finally going to be reading Bones to the Wind by Tatiana 
Obey, this is set in stone. I may even pick this one up first. I can't wait to read this one. I really enjoy the author's energy and I've heard really good things about this book, including from people who are on the last Queer Catch Up or Queer Corner that we had here on the channel, really enjoyed this one. So this is a coming of age sword and sorcery fantasy adventure, which is acting packed and humorous. The novel includes strong female characters LGBTQIA plus representation and mature themes. I'm looking forward to this one. The cover is gorgeous. Like I said, really enjoy the author's energy. I'm going in somewhat blind to a lot of these books, so I'm just going to see what happens and uh, where the wind takes me. Badum. Another book that has made an appearance on these lists a couple of times, which is now set in stone, is Unanimity by Alexandra L. Media. So this is another queer rep, I think it's sci fantasy novel uh, that I have had here on the channel before and it's finally going to move up the list into the definites and I'll be reading this one in the month of June. I think this one may also be geared towards the new adult age range more so than adult. Um, I may be wrong in that, so Alexandra, if you if you listen to this, maybe let us know in the comments down below. Um, but I am looking forward to this one. The cover is gorgeous. The internal artwork and chapter headers are also really nice, so I'm looking forward to picking this one up. Moving on from there, we have my book for the vlog this month, which is Carved Amidst the Shadows. This is by M.T. Fontaine. This was very kindly sent to me by the author. Now, I have not read this one out on the channel here before, so I will, will read the back. It says, The brands of Telgia, marked, carved, floored, and steward. I've got those on the bookmarks. It was a good dream, a vision of the people united in a world where nobody cared what brand stained their arm. When the gods shaped the continent into five kingdoms to be ruled by their progeny, they did not account for the greed of men. When they created the order from their god-blessed followers to mediate between realms, they neglected to plan against the hoarding of power. War between the royalists and the godly was inevitable. Five centuries later, the borders between kingdoms are impenetrable. No branded bond marked can cross them without burning to ash, except the Order's stewards. But a damaging new war has been prophesied, one that haunts the Order, one that will come to pass if carved traders roam free and the brandless born flawed are left alive. It starts with one girl that survives the impossible, Cayenne, the carved, and it takes shape through one... and it... It takes shape through one prince with ambition, Andreas the Marked. It hinges on one grieving man who is ready to give up hope, Rao the Steward. Three people bound by fate, whether they like it or not. This sounds like it's going to be a fun time, and I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping into this one. Again, thank you, Empty Fontaine, for sending this one my way. Then we move into my review copy for the month, and that is Red Hail by Jamie Kill on this one was submitted by Jamie over at Epic Indie, and I've been lucky enough to pick this one on up. Red Hale says, Professor Colin Ayres has spent years researching the strange story of Galena, Arizona, a sleepy border town ripped apart by violence and paranoia after the outbreak of a mysterious illness in 1960. Colin is certain Galena Colin is certain the Galena incident was simply a case of mass hysteria, but when his partner Alonzo starts exhibiting strange symptoms, Colin is shocked to realise they are the same as those that emerged in Galena a decade ago. I'm probably pronouncing that place name incorrectly. I apologise for Arizonians if it's a real place. If it's made up, I don't apologise. As Alonzo's condition worsens, Colin scrambles to piece together what really happened during that terrible summer in the past. He uncovers a story of murder, corruption, and fanaticism. The deeper he digs, the more he becomes convinced that what happened in Galena wasn't mass hysteria after all. When others start to develop the same eerie symptoms, Colin must confront the possibility that someone, or something, is driving the plague. Guided by rumours of a person who found a way to stop the plague in the 60s, Colin races to find answers before the disease destroys Alonzo and everyone else it touches. It sounds pretty rad to me. This one has a 4.19 rating on Goodreads with uh, 72 reviews and 164 ratings. That's pretty good odds. It gives me a chance to do a bit of a, a genre change up as well. Have a bit more sci-fi in here. It looks like it's a sci-fi mystery thriller. So I am, I'm not feeling burnout as such just yet, but I'm definitely getting to that point where I need a bit of a change. So this might serve as a nice change in the TBR, in the reading 
atmosphere vibe situation. The last one that is a definite and my chunker, which is going to take a fair amount of time, is Memories of Ice by Steven Erickson, book three in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. I've had a great time with Malazan so far. I've been reading this one alongside uh, Roger from Roger's Reads and also Mark Timoney, a good friend of mine. And we've all sort of had different experiences and what we look for in books is slightly different from one another. So it's been very interesting to experience Malazan with someone who has read it before and quite liked the overall story before, who can guide myself and Roger a little bit when we do not understand a few things. To be honest, it's mainly me not understanding. Roger seems to grasp a fair bit of it. And Roger seems to blitz through the book. So it's always quite interesting to have Roger send all these voice messages and updates come through and then listening to them once I've finally got to whatever chapter it is and having those insights along the way. But it's been a really fun experience so far. I'm hoping to continue on uh, with Memories of Ice this month and I think I have scheduled whatever the next one is in August. Now the books are getting quite a bit bigger. I have moved to doing one every two months but we'll see how that goes because I know the lads are quite keen whenever we finish a book to pick up the next one and it's me sort of holding them back. We'll see, they may just go ahead of me and I'll just read it in my own time, or maybe they'll wait for me, who knows. This brings us to a couple of the maybes. Sorry, there are five maybes, not four. The first one is a non-fiction and it's very short, so this is probably the first one I'll pick up. This is Dirty Laundry by Richard Pink and Roxanne Emery. This is about living with a partner who has ADHD and what you can do to support them. So Rachel has ADHD and sometimes I get quite frustrated at the isms that come with having a partner that has adult ADHD and following this couple over on their Instagram which is ADHD underscore love has taught me a lot of patience and a lot of about what actually goes to the brain of someone that does have ADHD. So I picked up the book, it's very short, I could probably read it in an afternoon and just get some more understanding and some more love and be a little bit more patient from my end. The next one that is a maybe is Swan Song by Robert McCammon. This is probably going to be one you see a fair bit on the maybe pile until I actually read it. Swan Song is not a priority read for me at the moment, but it is something I'm interested in. So I'm going to put it on the maybe pile as something to potentially pick up, especially when that burnout feeling starts to happen. This is a contemporary horror, I believe. So being able to have something that is different from straight up fantasy is going to be helpful. So that may be on the cards. I'm very nervous about reading Swan Song. One, it's tiny writing and it's 900 and something pages, but also this is a book which rivals one of my favorite books, The Stand by Stephen King. I've heard from multiple people that love The Stand that this is better. So it makes me nervous to like push that book off its pedestal and also have another 900 pager on the list. This may be one that I read slowly over a couple of months. I'm not sure yet, but it's there if I feel like I have enough time. Then we move into a couple of my SPFB09 picks that I want to get read this year, starting off with The First Rule by Stephen William Hanna. Then we've got A Low Country by Morgan Shank. And finally, The Bleeding Stone by Joseph John Lee. I won't go too much into those because these are books which will eventually move up the priority list to be ones that I definitely read this year. And I'll read the blurbs when we get there so we don't have a situation like today where I've already read the blurbs on different videos and I don't want to just talk for the sake of talking. So those are the books that I've got planned, the definites and the maybes and the listening tos for the month of June. What are you picking up? What are you excited to get to? Have you read any of the ones that I've mentioned? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm now going to jump to the June at a glance where I go through everything I've got planned in the month of June. Let's kick off June. On June 1st, I'll have my Buzzards Bowl review. This is the follow-up to The Trials of Ashmount or The Tragedy of Sedane Book 2 by John Palladino. Now going forward over the next couple of months, I have a lot of reviews to get through here on the channel if I'm going to try and keep them separate and give them the attention they deserve rather than trying to shove them together with potentially not matching up the genres or the books very well. I am going to try and do single reviews instead of those rapid reviews where I put them together unless 
there are a couple of sequels that go in. So Thursdays are a dedicated review day here on the channel from basically here on out. And the first review will be Buzzard's Bowl. We then move on to Monday the 5th where I'm going to go through my SPFBO9 TBR. Following that on Monday the 5th, we are going to have my SPFBO9 TBR. I already have eight books that are currently in the competition on my list to be read this year. And that those are going to be review copies that have already been sent to me or ones that I am genuinely interested in reading. So I've already put them on my list to read this year. I've been lucky enough to already have read about 14 books from the competition. I've got the eight that are sitting there ready to go on my TBR this year. And I've picked out another 12, which have really caught my attention. So I'll be going through uh, the eight that are already on there and also the 12 that I have picked out on that video. On the eighth, I'm going to have the Shattered Arc review. This was a YA epic fantasy by MH. Woods Court and I had a really good time with it and I think a prequel is already coming out. Now this week I am looking to have two SPFBO videos because it's SPFBO time and it's really exciting. So on the Saturday the 10th, all going well, I will have a SPFBO9 cover contest. And by cover contest, I just mean I've looked at all 300 covers and I've picked my top 10 that I think are absolutely stunning. And we're gonna go through those and just let you know the covers that caught my eye. On the 12th, I will have my June reading vlog. I am gonna get a tattoo on the 6th, so hopefully we'll get some footage of that happening um, on the 6th, and that will be ready to go for the June reading vlog. On Thursday the 15th, I will have my Of Thieves and Shadow book review ready to go. This is by B.S.H. Garcia, and honestly, one of the best debuts I've ever had the pleasure of reading. Now the weekend of the 17th and the 18th is not set in stone, so do not quote me, but Mr. Mark Timoney has recently commissioned an audiobook of The Blood of the Spear, book one in the Eye of Eternity. I have been so fortunate to have listened to some of the sample files and far out, they are good. The narrator has done a great job. And as I understand, the narrator actually reached out to Mark saying he liked the project so much and put his name forward for the audiobook. So I'd like to have a live interview at some point during the month. At the moment, I have it penned for the 17th and the 18th. It will definitely depend on when everyone is available and I'm hoping to do this one with Kayla from Kay's Hidden Shelf who's also interested in doing that interview with me. On the 19th, it is Pride Month in June so I'm going to be doing the top 10 LGBTQIA plus characters that I have read in books since I started recording books on the platform. So that would be probably around 2020s when I started really actively looking at what I was reading. Maybe it was 2021, but picking out my top LGBTQIA plus characters from the books that I've read. On the 22nd, we will have my four ordained review. This is by Aaron Hall, Aaron N. Hall, and this is another YA epic fantasy, which is very clean fantasy. I would say borderline Christian fantasy, which I had a pretty decent time with, so you can look out for that one there. And then on the last weekend of the month, we'll see who's available to try and get the queer corner out for the second quarter. On the 26th, I will be doing a mid-year goals check-in. This is not a mid-year freak-out tag or anything like that, but I wanted to have a look at the goals I set in January and just see where we're tracking and what I realistically think I can achieve before the end of the year. And then on Thursday the 29th, I will have the Awakening Fire book review. This is by Cassidy Faileen, and this is another YA epic fantasy. That's it. That's what I've got going on in the month of June. Are you following along with SPFB09 this year? Let me know. I've got a little bit of content surrounding that coming up, and I'm genu genuinely interested in talking to people who are following along with the competition. That's what I've got going on. If you like the content, give it one of those. If you want to see more of it, click subscribe at your will. Catch you in the next video. Ciao.